Welcome. I'm Kinetic Symphony. I hunt down and report on weird and mysterious stories, from glitches to the paranormal. Case file number 788, written by Big Little Bry. No engine can do this. So, I went to pick up some food from a restaurant at the mall. I've been to this restaurant a ton of times. I got back to my car after picking up my food, put my GPS on, and started driving my usual route. There's this loop on the way to my boyfriend's house that I have to take on the highway that I always remember because it's a little tricky to merge back onto the highway. I took this loop and headed to the direction of my boyfriend's house, which I'm used to. I blanked out for a second, looked down at my GPS because I didn't recognize where I was and I noticed there's a turnaround coming up on my GPS. I look up and realize I'm approaching the light where I turn left to go to the mall restaurant. I was extraordinarily confused because there's no way I could have gotten off my highway after the loop and go back in the direction of the mall. I looked at my GPS just to double check if I accidentally put in another address because maybe I was in car hypnosis and ended up looking at my GPS and going the wrong way. But no, it was directing me to my boyfriend's house. I always put on my GPS out of habit even when I know where I'm going just to keep up with delays. I was so confused and shaken up by this because I have no memory between getting off the loop and merging and then ending up back near the mall. I'm still so confused about how this happened. Also yesterday, I was driving with my boyfriend and there was a tow truck transporting a small truck. I looked in the small truck and saw a man in it and glowing lights, like he had neon lights in his car and a bright radio display or something. I immediately pointed it out to my boyfriend because I thought it was funny that a guy was just chilling in his truck while getting towed. I speed up and get near it so my boyfriend can see. And surprise, surprise, nobody was in the car. What's happening? Case notes for file 788. No engine can do this. So at first I was just thinking, okay, you're driving, higher chances of death could be quantum mortality. But then you mentioned this figure in a car being towed. Maybe it's some sort of spirit that's haunting the highway? Why? <laughs> I don't know. This maybe could be an explanation for all these events where people are just zapping forward in time or in space without any recollection of traveling that distance? Some sort of entity that continuously possesses people in specific locations and just wipes their memory as a result? I'm not sure though because this can happen to multiple people in the same car. So is this entity possessing multiple people at the same time? Is that possible? Case file number 789, written by Breaking My Habit. I know he was in bed. I'm not a superstitious person. I don't believe in ghosts or anything like that, and I've never experienced anything like this before. But after what just happened, I'm covered in goosebumps and I don't have an explanation. It's honestly terrifying. My boyfriend texted me that he was going to bed from his office. I got up a couple minutes after he sent that and headed to the bedroom. When I opened the door, I saw him lying down in bed facing away from me towards the wall. I swear I saw him and his hair. I asked if he was okay and I heard him mumble a response. I didn't completely hear but it was his voice. I looked away for a split second to put down my water bottle on my nightstand and he was suddenly gone. I panicked. I thought maybe he was playing a prank on me and was hiding behind the bed. I told him it wasn't funny. I asked where he went. It's a narrow bedroom so he couldn't have walked past me. I go to look behind the bed, absolutely losing my mind, and he isn't there. I keep asking where he went, hoping that he will come out and it's all a joke. He wasn't hiding anywhere behind or under the bed. I'm still freaked out because I was sure I also heard his voice and saw him. At this point, I go back into the hallway completely panicked and a few seconds later, my boyfriend walks out of his office. He was really confused to see me so panicked and asked what was wrong. I didn't even know how to start to explain. He was never in the bedroom. We are both freaked out. Case notes for file 789. I know he was in bed. So this triggered a memory in the deep recesses of my mind. I remember having a teddy bear when maybe I was 8 or 9? living in saint Eustache, a little uh, town in uh, Quebec. But I remember looking at the teddy bear as I was getting into bed, and then looking back over, like 
two seconds later and the teddy bear wasn't there. So I guess that was my first glitch before the tennis balls, a teddy bear was stolen. But I didn't really give it any thought back then as a kid, I don't know why, because it is very weird now that I think about it as an adult. But yeah, back then I was just like, okay, I guess the teddy bear is gone, <laughs> never saw it again. It was a Winnie the Pooh themed. In your case though, obviously not a teddy bear, a real life human being. A man, and he just wasn't there, and I don't think it's astral projection. He was still awake, not affected at all in any conceivable way. The only thing I can think of that makes sense is that you just were seeing into a different universe parallel to ours, and in that universe your boyfriend was in bed earlier. That's simple, and I think it explains a lot of things. We're able to see into other universes, perhaps more often than we realize. But only see, not necessarily cross over, unless we die. Creepy file number 51. Written by Tea Time at 3, the dumbest hitman in the world. To give a little context, I used to work at an apartment complex. As a result, I've had my fair share of creepy encounters. Most residents keep to themselves and don't cause issues, probably about 95% of the time, but the other 5% took up almost all my time. Isaac was one of the 5%. When he first rented his apartment, he definitely had stoner vibes, but he was nice enough and passed his background check. Almost immediately, however, he started causing issues. The lady next door complained she could smell his smoke constantly. The guy downstairs complained he could hear his stereo all hours of the day and night. Another resident accused him of following him home one night. The police were regularly there breaking up fights between him and his girlfriends. We caught him hiding two large dogs in his apartment and he regularly let them run loose which ultimately resulted in another dog and two people getting attacked. He accidentally discharged a gun in his apartment once. Needless to say, he caused a lot of issues. At first, he was very apologetic and said he would make an effort to remedy the problems, but things kept getting worse and after a year of weekly calls or notices from the office, he eventually became standoffish. One morning, I received a call from Isaac, letting me know he'd broken up with one of his girls and she wouldn't leave the apartment. He asked me to personally come up and remove her. I'm a small woman, so even if I wanted to take the risk, I physically wouldn't be capable of wrestling an angry woman out of his apartment. I suggested he call the police. He then asked if I could make a maintenance man come up to remove her. I offered to call the police on his behalf, but Isaac said he didn't want to involve them and hung up. A few hours later, Isaac came down to the office with a jump drive and said he needed to print out a 50 plus page document. Residents weren't technically allowed to use our office printer, but on the rare occasion someone asked to, I usually didn't say no. It was an easy way to build good rapport, but between Isaac becoming such a problem tenant and how large his document was, I told him I couldn't print his document. I gave the excuse that our paper toner print history was monitored and we would get in trouble for printing such a large document out for him. Not liking my answer, he started screaming about how it was bullcrap. He accused me of being useless, bringing up my refusal to fight his ex and power tripping. He called me a freaking b-word multiple times and said someone needed to bring me down a peg. I was pretty over him at this point and told him that if he was going to behave like a child that he needed to leave. He told me I couldn't make him. Bluntly, I told him he would leave or I would call the police and have him removed, but also told him I would ban him from the office going forward. Normally I tried to kill the residents with kindness, but his lease was ending in a week and I didn't care anymore if he hated me. My threat seemed to work. He angrily knocked over my pen holder and then slammed both doors hard as he left. The following morning, a cop was waiting for me when I got to work. He asked if Isaac was a resident and I confirmed he was. The officer explained that the body of a teen had been discovered the day before and Isaac was their prime suspect. He was the last person to text the kid asking where to meet him where his body was found shortly after the message. The police believe Isaac had been paid to kill him. Based on the timing of the text and when the boy was discovered, Isaac would have to have left my office and gone directly there. Ultimately, the police wanted to use Isaac's move out day as an opportunity to try and catch him. To nobody's surprise, he did not show up. When I walked his apartment to inspect for damage, there was a lot. I found a bank receipt from the day of the murder, 
someone had wired him $17,000. I thankfully never saw Isaac again. He was caught in another country a few months later and is now in prison. Case Notes for Creepy File Number 51 The Dumbest Hitman in the World so, not too much to say on this one, uh, it's rather comical at the ending, and uh, justice was served, which is nice. But not exactly the brightest ball, busy. You'd think if you're a hitman, you'd try to hide it better. Be a positive member of society, and engage with your neighbors well and sincerely. But again, that's the whole thing about this story. He wasn't exactly smart. And so, he's in prison. That's one thing they say. Prison isn't necessarily where all the bad people end up, it's where... It's where all the dumb criminals end up, and all the smart ones are in Washington, D.C.